Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of A Dog Soul. I'm Anita, I'm your host and a professional dog trainer and today we're going to talk about how you can make training your reactive dog easy. So stay tuned and have fun. I originally chose this topic because there was a woman who insulted me and was really nasty to me because in her opinion positive training doesn't work always because she didn't want to put the effort in to make it easy and it's not just making it easy for the dog it's also making it easy for yourself because when you start training with your reactive pup or also with anything else, there are a couple of things which make your life unnecessarily harder, a lot harder. But it seems like sometimes we have just learned that there is only one way and no other way. And therefore, when you get stuck, there is no way around because there is only one way. And that's where training gets really difficult. And so many people, when I tell them that when they're training with me, they look at me with these huge eyes and then there is the relief. And that's why I chose this topic and that's why I wanted to bring it to you today. So let's see what happens very often in dog training. We pick a situation where we want to train our dog, either because he's reactive to other dogs, so we have to train with other dogs, or it's something like resource guarding and we have to train with the thing the dog's guarding, or when our dogs are a little sensitive to sounds, then we have to pick the sound he's afraid of and then we start training. That's not wrong, but it makes things very, very hard. So let's stick to the example with dog on dog reactivity. If your dog is reactive to other dogs and you live in an area where you meet other dogs, that's very common because otherwise you wouldn't know that your dog's reactive to other dogs. So the first thing I do with all my reactivity clients, leash reactivity clients, I let them stop walking when they meet other dogs. <laughs> it's so easy, but it's so often not done because the re routines are so burned into people's brains that they cannot even imagine picking another time or another route or driving with the dog somewhere or even stop walking because in some cases, Walking's just not an option at the moment. Because what that does to your dog is, your dog is overwhelmed by the situation. Otherwise, he wouldn't react badly to another dog. And every time you go out and you meet another dog, your dog gets overwhelmed. And he has to react, in his opinion, to make the other dog go away. Because it's working. As soon as we have a yelling dog on the leash, the other person will pick the dog up and walk away. So the other dog leaves and our dog has gotten what he wanted. Why shouldn't he do that? Why should he stop that? It's working. So every single time we go outside and our dog is not ready to meet another dog, but we do meet another dog, he will react and he will get better and better and better and better in reacting because he's exercising it all the time. Of course he gets better with it. And sometimes when I post this online and <laughs> people see it, they say, oh my God, you can't stop walking your dog because yeah, it's out there that every dog has to walk every day. Otherwise they go cuckoo. That's not true. First of all, that's brought into the world by a guy who has no idea about dog behavior and how to exercise your dog's brain. I don't know if you know who I mean, but I won't say any names. So 
Let's just leave it at that. Of course your dog needs exercise. Yes, sure. His muscles need exercise. And of course, being outside and sniffing and going around is natural for a dog. Yes. But if he cannot relax one second on that walk because he's always worried that there will be another dog somewhere and he will get overwhelmed again. And yes, dogs think like that, obviously, because if you have a reactive dog and he has experienced that overwhelm for a very long time, you can see it in the dog as soon as you go outside the door. He will tense up and he will be tense the whole walk, no matter how many or if you meet any other dog. So you can also look at it that way. If you have a dog and he injures his leg, he is also grounded for six to eight weeks. What do you do then? You know, then we have to get creative. And it's the same thing with reactivity. If our dogs cannot handle the outside, and it doesn't matter if it's fear or if it's reactivity or if it's just craziness because of adolescence, then you have to stop bringing your dog into those situations. Of course, you, if your dog is ready to drive in a car, you can put it in a, in a car and drive somewhere very rural where you meet nobody and your dog can sniff around and be a dog and have fun with you. And that's an amazing idea. Whenever you can do that, do that. But if you don't have that option because you don't have a car, your dog doesn't drive in a car or whatever, then pick another time. Let's just say when it's not too hot out, noon. Very often, noon is a time when nobody's around because everybody's eating. Or you can say, okay, we live in the city, so it's not entirely dark and my dog's fine in the dark. Then go at 9 p.m. Whatever fits into your lifestyle. I cannot decide that for you, but if we are a little creative, then we can find options. I lived in a city in a district where it's very, very green. So we had incredibly many dogs. <laughs> it was it was really horrible with a reactive dog. I can truly understand you. And it was horrible for my dog as well. His reactivity, like most dogs' reactivity, came from fear. So he was so fearful when we came to specific corners or paths where a lot of dogs walk that he just couldn't move forward. He couldn't. It was impossible for him. He was so scared. And that was happening when he smelled the other dogs. And not when he saw them. When he saw them, it was over for him. He started yelling and jumping and lunging and barking and whatever he could to just make them go away. And what I did was, if I wanted to walk during the daytime, I put him in the car, I drove half an hour out of the city and walked somewhere where he could just be a dog and sniff around and do stuff like that. Of course, for him, that was also not always an option because he's scared of deer as well. And so everywhere that smells like deer isn't an option. And when I didn't want to drive out or there was a time when I was too scared to drive, so I couldn't drive out of the city or when his fear of deer didn't let me get him to a wooded area or something like that. Then we walked at 7 to 9 p.m., somewhere in between, and also not in the greenest area of the district, but in side streets where there was very little green and very much concrete. People didn't take their dogs there. They just didn't. And he could start relaxing on the walks. And he could actually start sniffing and be a dog. A dog doesn't just stop being a dog only because he doesn't have a lot of green. Of course, he needs some green to eliminate himself and stuff like that. But being relaxed on a walk and not experiencing that overwhelm all the time is worth so much more than a little green. Believe me, it's so obvious. If you watch your dog, it's obvious, totally. And coming back to this woman, because it really, it made me so sad because that dog 
had six families before her. At least that's what she told me. And the problem was that there was a street outside and he was afraid of cars, so he jumped at cars. And she said she couldn't train that nicely because she had to walk him over those streets. And that's just not true. There is always a possibility to start training in an environment that's at least halfway acceptable. So your dog is maybe a little tense, but you're not throwing him into the situation he absolutely cannot handle. And yes, you have to do more management and try to create situations very creatively if you have a hard time with that. Yes, there are situations that are really tough for our dogs and also for us when we try to train and we just can't get the distance in because there is no distance yes that's hard but it's almost always doable and if it's not if the dog is constantly stressed where he's living then it's not the right place for him to live if there is no way you can change anything and believe me most of the time there is and for some dogs, especially the very fearful dogs, if they don't walk for a year, two years, five years, then they don't walk for that time. It doesn't matter because it's just not possible. And nobody's thinking about, hey, we have to get that dog into a harness and put a leash on and go outside when it's absolutely not possible. And I think it's very unfair to throw dogs who comply with what we want out into situations they can't handle just because they make it possible for us with not escalating too badly. If you had a dog who would start biting you as soon as another dog comes into sight, you would make a lot more effort than for a dog who is just hiding behind your legs. And that's very sad. I don't think that we should push our dogs into escalating more and more and more just because we have these stories set in our minds that are just not true. So whenever you experience problems with training your dog, try to be very open-minded. I know it's hard, it's very hard and I've been there and I recently had to learn, I'm learning that for five years now, <laughs> that Whenever my dog is scared of deer scent, I have to turn around because there is no way he can walk in a relaxed way on that path. And it makes me sad sometimes because he could be so happy outside, but it is what it is. And yes, I can train a lot of things, but I cannot foresee scent. That's not possible. So he has to tell me that he's not comfortable and I have to react according to that. I have to make sure he gets somewhere he's comfortable in. and with reactive dogs it's the same thing and as i said before you can make training easy when you just set the environment in a way that gives you success easily or you can struggle a lifetime and it won't get any better so it's totally up to you and it's up to your open-mindedness as soon as we start Pushing those stories and those old sayings aside, we can get so much more creative and we can get ideas that are so amazing. And I'm always surprised at how creative people get how to present food for their dogs. And that's the creativity we need in training. So whenever you train your dog, try to set yourself and your dog up for success. And as soon as you get annoyed by the training, stop. Do it because you love doing it. And if you need help with that, you can write me an email or a WhatsApp. Or if you are too far away and you don't want to do anything online, then get a trainer in your area, a positive reinforcement-based trainer. And see what's possible. Sometimes four eyes see more than two, sometimes four ears hear more than two and sometimes two brains are more creative than one. So I wish you a lot of fun with creative options for walking and training and maybe you want to write me in the comments what your solution was to the whole 
walking your reactive dog or any other training issue that you have. I would love to see those comments. So have a blast training and we'll see each other next time. Bye. Thank you.